Hello, and welcome to One Man's Opinion, where I, your intrepid critic, Tim, reviews professional theater across Connecticut and Broadway. Today, I am reviewing Throne Stone's production of The Suburbs, a new work of three different one-act plays, all giving a critical look on Throne Stone's hometown of Ridgefield, Connecticut, running through September 12th. Directed by Kulud Sawaf, my apologies if I messed up your name, uh, the suburbs isn't staged at Thronestone's actual theater at 440 Main Street. Instead, it is set at three different locations where the audience will be required to trek from one location to the next to view all three parts. I'll discuss all three pieces in order of how they are viewed. The first play, An Education, How to Confront the Classics, is written by Catherine Yu and is presented in the garden of the Keeler Tavern Museum. It stars Ian Michael Min as Federico, Bridget Ann White as Clarice, and Will Jeffries as Bob. Of the three pieces, this one, for me, is the biggest mess. Uh, one thing to understand is that all three of these one-act plays are no more than 30 minutes long, and An Education suffers the most from its minimal runtime. The play takes place at a discussion panel for Ridgefield's Board of Education, where the three characters debate the continued need for Latin studies in high school. Now, Federico has at least one PhD in Latin studies and or languages, and is looking to expand Latin studies to incorporate the influence of the Roman Empire on non-Western civilized countries. Uh, meanwhile, Clarice and Bob have their own objections. Much of the problem with an education is that the characters, especially Carice and Bob, are extremely one-dimensional. Bob doesn't see the reason for this expansion. There's no pertinence to it. Meanwhile, Clarice seems so focused on women's studies and the abolishment of the patriarchy, it feels like she's in an entirely different play. An education feels incomplete. The characters have no developments. There is no motivation as to why they feel the way they do beyond the fact that they're white, and there's no communication in their conflict. It's just belligerent bloviating, uh, which I can get by turning on Fox News. <laughs> it, meanwhile, Federico's point of view is muted by the obstinance of the other two. So there's no journey. It's just 15 to 20 minutes of static image of a hollow argument. Now, as a news reporter... I have been to a number of town council meetings and board of education meetings, and yes, these meetings can end up like this, but there's no dramatic weight in it. Also, it was apparent that some of the actors weren't fully confident in their dialogue. Uh, there were stagnant pauses between lines that didn't have any action as one actor would stop speaking and everyone would kind of wait for another to remember it was time for them to speak. And so that's extremely frustrating as an audience member when actors are are showing that they are not fully versed in the material that they are that they are presenting after its abrupt ending cuz the play does have a very abrupt stop and everybody's like oh is it over the audience at the end of an education picks up their chairs and yes you do have to bring chairs to this production and you are escorted about half a mile to the Aldrich Contemporary Arts Museum, where play number two, The Caterers, by Tony Manessis, is presented. I really like this one. For some reason that is not entirely explained, The Caterers is set in 2030 and starts with following the hijinks of a team of caterers, which is great, who are in the middle of serving an engagement party. <laughs> and all five of them are really enjoyable and fantastic. Uh, they have exuberance and individual colors about their characters. And th and I'm not just talking about their brilliantly colored outfits uh, they're required to wear, to wear as servers of the party, but their, their actual uh, nuances that each of them have. It's really enjoyable. And then when a young woman, Josephine, played by Nell Kessler, arrives, uh, Garcia, one of the caterers, played by Maya Carter, assumes that she is a stand-in for a caterer who didn't show up. Uh, the two quickly form a bond as the party goes forward. Now, Manessis has written actually a really touching, bittersweet piece of love and melancholy. Uh, there is a bit of a stretch of suspension of disbelief with some of the spontaneity of Garcia in particular, but as the play moves forward, it isn't entirely unbelievable that she would take the leap that she does in this piece. Of the three, it is the best of the different one acts that is being presented in the suburbs. 
And once the caterers and the audience strikes up again, grabs your chairs, and you head out to the front lawn of West Lane Inn, uh, which is about another half mile away, uh, where the third and final play is presented called Should We Dance Instead by Phoenicia Farrell. Should We Dance Instead is a ghost story, uh, maybe not so coincidentally set at the inn. Uh, it starts with Maram, played by J Jeffries again, who played Bob in an education in the first piece. Maram is visited by the spirits of Uncle Ned Armstrong, played by Tennessee Davis, and his wife Betsy, played by Nedra Snipes. Now, the two ghosts are advocates for Ned's Hill, which is a real property up in Ridgefield, and uh, it's a location where the Underground Railroad had stopped. They're telling Maram, who is a member of Ridgefield's Planning and Zoning Commission, at least in the play anyways, uh, to save this farmland and preserve it as a historical land site. <clears throat> the problem is, is that the property is up for sale for $28 million. Now, like an education, Should We Dance Instead doesn't have a clear resolution, but in this case it works, uh, mostly due to the impassioned performances by Davis and Snipes, who elevate Farrell's dialogue uh, to challenge not only Maram, but the audience to escape greed and apathy and look beyond our comfort zone. Now, I would have liked to have seen more conflict between Merriman and the Armstrongs, or maybe involve another party in in the story to instigate the conflict a little more. Uh, but the construct of these three one acts, which were aimed to be under 30 minutes, uh, with that in mind, there is only so much that can be addressed. Uh, so maybe if Farrell wants to expand the piece into a larger play, that would benefit it a lot. But one of the problems with it is, is that the play is also very timely. Now, though I do admire Thronestone's, well, stones for addressing the social cultural issues of the town of Ridgefield and what it's dealing with, it makes them very immediate. It causes them to risk aging poorly uh, due to the limited timeliness of the stories. Except the caterers. That one kind of has a little bit more of a timelessness to it. Uh, but when it comes to an education and Shall We Dance Instead, there's definitely a feel of this needs to be addressed immediately and presented immediately, which can make it less relevant in other towns and other times. Now, as for the presentation format, it won't be for everyone. I know at least three colleagues, uh, three other critics who are associates of mine who have decided not to review the suburbs because of the walking requirements alone, uh, which add up to a little over a mile. Uh, plus, having to haul their individual chairs around can be a burden, especially for the more physically challenged theater goers. If Thronestone has a mode of assisting these audience members, it needs to be more pronounced in their publicity so the audience members don't decide to just skip it. There is some good stuff here. Uh, Shall We Dance Is Dead does have a really strong message it, and uh, The Caterers is a really enjoyable piece. There is motivation and reason to go see these one-act plays. I just wish that the ingenuity of the suburbs wasn't so much that it became problematic for people with mobility issues. So, that's one man's opinion of the suburbs. Leave yours in the comments below. Uh, next up, I'm returning to Legacy Theater for their production of Jason Robert Brown's The Last Five Years, which I will be seeing on Sunday. Uh, so be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you at the theater.